Welcome home. We are live here on Up With Creme on WSU's campus in Pullman for a week of welcome. Students are returning back to campus for the first time in about a year. They'll be welcomed by also some hazy conditions. We're talking about it next on Up With Creme. Unhealthy air quality continues for today and perhaps through this entire weekend as there's not much relief in sight from the hot and hazy weather. You can really smell that smoke when you walk out the door, but you can really see it as well. It'll give you a look at visibility in Spokane in just a minute. We only have to look out the window to see the devastation that's in our community with the homelessness and the needs. A restart for women in need. How Christ Kitchen is helping one cup at a time. Up with Creme starts right now. Well, good morning and thank you for watching Up With Krim. I'm Channing Curtis. We're going to start things off with some breaking news as our region has the worst air quality in the country. Right now, the air quality in the Spokane area is sitting in the unhealthy range. However, overnight, other parts of our region worsened and dropped to very unhealthy. So this morning, we have team coverage all the way to Whitman County. Our very own Tim Pham is live in Pullman this morning as they have the worst air quality in eastern Washington. Now back here in Spokane, we're crossing our fingers for a less hazy weekend. Our Thomas Patrick is in the Outdoor Weather Center. He's going to join us in just a bit to talk about when we could see some relief from the heat and the smoke as he'll be joining us here now. Thomas, what can you tell us about what's going on out there, especially with these triple digit temperatures on our way? Yeah, thankfully we're not in the triple digits right now. A bit of relief from the heat, at least first thing in the morning, but boy, oh boy, you do really smell that smoke the moment you step outside. Air quality is listed as unhealthy right now and has been very unhealthy in parts of the region across the inland northwest. Look at our downtown camera. You're supposed to see Mount Spokane somewhere behind the clock tower there. Not possible with how thick that smoke is. Same story here on the south. Though. We're actually supposed to see some of the hills just off to our east, and we can't even do that from our own studios. In fact, let's look at the visibilities down to a mile and a half for Pullman, mile and quarter in Lewiston, mile and three quarters between Spokane and Coeur d'Alene. This is just how thick the smoke is, so it's acting kind of like a light fog out there, and that is obviously correlating to the unhealthy and very unhealthy air quality that we are seeing across the Illinois Northwest as of right now. This is not expected to change really throughout much of the day today. Might mix out a bit with the heat of the day, but not by much. In addition to that, it is going to be hot. It was in the mid 90s yesterday. We're getting closer to 100 today, and if we squeeze out one more 100 degree day, it will be a record breaker for the area and that's what we're going to be dealing with all weekend long. So coming up going to have a detailed forecast of the air quality and heat through the weekend and when we will finally get a bit of short term relief. Now we're going to send things over to Nicole who is also tracking the air quality across Spokane this morning. Good morning, Nicole. Yeah, good morning, Thomas. So right now I am in Kendall Yards where the sun should be coming up. We should be seeing that sunrise, but really it is just haze and smoke covering the entire sky. I'll give you a look here. This has been a, a really good vantage point here over the Maple Street Bridge. You can see we should be seeing the Maple Street Bridge completely clearly. At this point, we are so close and you can just see straight across Maple Street Bridge, even at the very end of it, it's hazy. It's it's not clear and that is 100% not normal and uh, for right now from this vantage point. And as you continue moving, uh, uh, you know, moving this way, you can start seeing downtown. You can see those smoke stacks, kind of those those really iconic Spokane spots that should be really clear from this point. There really are uh, relatively close to us right here uh, from this vantage point, but they are just completely uh, shrouded in smoke right now. So definitely a very big shocker when you come outside this morning. Uh, it's going to smell really bad. You're going to be able to see it. Not very good visibility. Of course, it's not really affecting driving. You know, you have enough visibility to drive, but really if you are looking for any of those views, they're going to be shrouded by smoke this morning. So just make sure you're being careful staying inside. Uh, if you are outside for too long, you start feeling that headache, that sore throat, that runny nose, just listen to your body and head inside to a safe place. Live in Spokane, I'm Nicole Hernandez. All right, thanks, Nicole. Now, as I mentioned, we have team coverage all this morning talking about the poor air quality throughout the inland northwest. Our Tim Pham is actually out in Pullman right now where students are getting ready to head back to WSU, but they're coming back to some of the worst air quality in our region right now. Good morning, Tim.
Hey, good morning, Channing. Yeah, not great air quality right now in Pullman. We're inside right now, inside the Compton Union Building, the Student Union Building here on WSU's campus. We were outside all morning long, and it is just very, very hazy this morning. Visibility is extremely low when we were driving down to the Palouse. It was hard to see this morning. Obviously, it was very dark, almost looked like fog, kind of like what Nicole was telling us about a little bit earlier. But yeah, students will be moving in starting today through this weekend, and it is very hazy. So uh, not the typical week of welcome that students are used to during the summer when it's beautiful out here in the Palouse. So it's something to keep in mind as you are driving in today. Speaking of driving in, Washington State Patrol, uh, they're emphasizing extra patrols this weekend because of all of the people moving into town. Washington State Patrol saying they're conducting emphasis patrols on Highway 195. They'll be focusing on speeding, distracted and impaired driving, and other collision causing violations. And as every experienced Coug knows, you want to be extra careful in Colfax. We all know that if you speed even a little bit in Colfax, you could end up with a ticket and that's no fun obviously but students moving back in on campus this weekend after a really tough year you know you think about students did uh, online learning pretty much all last year there were a few students on campus but the majority of campus did remote learning last year because of the pandemic so this is the really the first year first time since the pandemic started that students are back here on campus residence halls will be very very busy and at WSU, they're keeping regulations very tight to keep students safe as they enter college. Move in will actually be timed and spaced out different than in previous years. Students will check in at Beasley Coliseum first before making their way to their specific residence hall. So keep that in mind. You want to go there first. And then when moving in, members of your student's household, you can help them. Uh, but volunteers will also be on hand. They are saying that anyone who's not vaccinated must wear a mask and to move in residence, you have to be uh, you have to complete the school's vaccination requirement. So one of the things that is new this morning, new from overnight, uh, WSU announcing last night that they are changing their requirements. They're saying that once the FDA approves the COVID vaccine, that philosophical and personal exemptions for the vaccine will no longer be allowed. So this is uh, brand new information from last night. They're telling us that after the exemptions are removed, students will have 45 days to start their vaccination process and they can still request an exemption for religious and medical reasons. And this change does not apply to staff and faculty. Now, if you are not fully vaccinated while inside a WCU building, you will be required to wear a face mask. Fully vaccinated students and anyone visiting WSU's campus are also encouraged to wear a face mask while indoors. And we're not told about any social distancing right now that's required on campus. But uh, Whitman County, you know, obviously had a sharp increase in COVID cases last year and national publications really took notice. Pullman and Whitman County, they were in the national headlines and publications even such as the New York Times picked up the rise in COVID cases in Pullman during 2020. The New York Times listed Pullman as the fifth highest city in the United States for metro areas with the fastest rising case numbers. Most cases reported were in young adults. Now, the vice president for marketing and communications at WSU told us students who returned to Pullman last year felt like they really had no choice but to come back despite WSU's request that students stay home. Students do need to realize most of your colleagues and, and classmates are doing the right thing and you should be doing the right thing as well. So WSU's COVID cases extended beyond campus boundaries. You know, the, the school closing down really affected everyone. It affected businesses and uh, restaurants and hospitality in the Pullman area and that it was a really tough for them. Whitman County was one of three counties in the state during the Washington reopening plan that had to move back to phase two and that was another devastating hit to businesses this last spring. Of course, now everyone fully reopened in the state. The pandemic forced some Pullman businesses to close permanently, which was very unfortunate to see. Meanwhile, others are just struggling to get by and it's led to a decrease in tax revenue, which in turn affects projects and services in the city. When people struggle in our city, that does have a greater impact on just economic development. And, and as we're, we're talking about revitalization of downtown and all these other initiatives, we need that economy to be strong and robust.
So the ripple effect of restrictions hurt the bottom line of many businesses and you had low traffic obviously because students were online and not in Pullman and any customers that were in town they were limited to just 25 percent capacity so this it was very tough and this morning I'm joined by Mike Wagner thanks so much for being with us right. Mike is the owner of Zoe's Coffee House and also Cougar Country. That's right. You're the new owner of Cougar Country. You've been on our show a few times, Mike. Mm -hmm. Glad to have you here with us. Well, but we're in the union building this morning because there's some new tenants in the union building, including mm -hmm. Cougar Country. You can see the banners there up and mm -hmm. uh, you guys, they're getting the kitchen ready and it is looking fantastic. So Mike, tell us, uh, what has this last year been like for Cougar, Cougar Country? Well, it's been, um, Cougar Country was, you know, we were a drive-in and lots of our uh, food was, you know, our customers got everything to go anyway. So we jumped right into that mode, especially after we were shut down in the lobby. And even when the lobby was open for 25% and then 50%, it's so compact in there that we couldn't, um, we only had like four tables. Wow. So uh, our whole, so, right away we said we have to start delivering so we took employees that were we never laid anyone off so we took employees that were there and mm. we said you got a car good you got insurance good yeah. let's start delivering <laughs> we're going to innovate we're going to yeah. change your job a little bit yeah i want to ask you about this second location though you know obviously and in a time where some businesses are closing it's great to see other businesses expanding and mm -hmm. moving on to campus will be great for Cougar Country. Uh, tell us about this opportunity to be on campus closer to the students. Well, it, it's true, you know, that like for, for us and all our restaurant friends, these are really troublesome times and everything, but we really believe in our brand, you know, not just the Zoe brand, but especially the Cougar Country brand. And um, we had this opportunity, uh, the university sent out a, a notice of opportunity, so we applied for it. And we applied for actually a very small space yeah. upstairs. <laughs> and I gave this big presentation and I said, I, at the end I said, honestly, I don't think we can do it up there. It's too small. Yeah. So they said, well, actually, we were thinking of you down here. Wonderful. <laughs> so yeah, so now we have, um, we're still working a little bit on everything. We have our coffee set up and we have something we have to fill in there. Uh, we've already started using the kitchen for our catering for yeah. Zoe, okay. so uh, it's kind of a two-fold uh, process up here. You so. get coffee and a burger. That's right. I like the sound of that <laughs> in the morning. Well, hey, Mike, we're also going to talk about the employee shortage facing, uh, you know, Cougar Country, but mm -hmm. everyone really in Pullman facing mm -hmm. that in the hospitality and restaurant industry. We're going to talk about that coming up in our next half hour. We're going to show you inside the kitchen and how things are uh, getting going. So we're s super excited to have a. Yeah. Pullman staple inside the Union Building, super yeah. exciting. I'm gonna get my crinkle Very fries good. and That's shakes. Right. Super and your fry sauce. That. Fry right. sauce, mm, mm. so good, <laughs> even this early in the morning. All right, uh, we're, our live coverage of Back to School continues this morning on, from WSU's campus in our next half hour, but in the meantime, I'll send it back to you in the studio. Channing? All right, thanks, Tim. Well, coming up, a new Supreme Court ruling could mean big things for people experiencing homelessness. This morning, new restrictions that could make it so that police cannot tow their cars. And quite a bit of smoke across the inland northwest this morning. We're tracking how much longer that's going to linger all the way through the weekend. That plus some very hot temperatures. Your forecast is coming up next.